We still had to find a way to break in the new shop. Welcome to the new headquarters of Junkyard Digs and Junkyard Mook. Wait, now how do they do it in that show? They're like, I am a cookie chef and- I farm butterflies. You farm butterflies. Our budget is $36 million. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of Junkyard Digs. We're gonna totally step away from the normal and do something we've never done before. We've revived everything from tiny cars to large trucks and we're running out of both things to revive and space. Well, today we have a solution for both of those, don't we? We do. Yep. You've seen the thumbnail. We're reviving a shop that was built over 120 years ago. Let's go check it out. So I should probably say one thing right away. This whole entire shop is A, neither abandoned, nor B, fully built 120 years ago. That very east wall was built in about 1901. There is an office on that side of it that was built in 1901. Then after that, in the very early 1900s, somewhere around 1920, 30, this was built to here. As you can see, the wall changes. And they had two large overhead doors. And this was the ground level right here. So it was drive in to this level. And then in about 30 to 40 year increments, changes started being made. This was dug out to a lower base. The doors were filled. They had a door somewhere else. I'm not sure where. And then the next 30 years later, a segment was added. 30 years later, a segment was added. So on and so forth until it brings us to today, a 4,000 square foot space, AKA the new headquarters of Junkyard Digs and Junkyard Mook. Yeah, as you can see, we've already moved some trucks in here. Um, that's the 68 from the 68 uh, farm truck revival. We've got some good plans for that. And of course, Mook's booger truck. But that's not what today's video is about. We're actually gonna take a break from the cars and build a space better equipped for working on cars to bring you guys better, cleaner, less cramped, and rushed videos. A little more echoey for now. Yeah, a little bit echoey, we'll fix that. So let's go ahead and take a tour. Here's what we got. This is gonna be our workbench, obviously. It's way bigger than we need it to be, but that's okay, because I'm sure we'll end up filling that. Have we looked in any of these cabinets to see if there's anything in there? I'm gonna find something cool. I'm gonna win. I got dirt. I found spiderwebs. Oh man, you're already winning. I found a plastic tube. And a board, and a and a fuel pump gasket. Nothing in this one. What about a wire. Oh, a spark plug wire. And a paint gun. Okay, you're you're winning. You're winning. What's that? It's probably empty. Oh, paint gun. Heck. So. Oh, hang on. Tools. I found tools. Oh. Oh yes, yes! I have always said I need to go find an old farmer set of massive, massive sockets and a giant ratchet. I've always wanted a set of these and now we have one. Okay, so there's the cabinets. Let's go check out something else. It's gonna get just gross from here. Just a heads up. Oh boy. So our north wall, as you can see, it's all sorts of different patterns and therefore different colors and shades of poop. So that needs painted, which sucks because that is a lot of surface area to paint. This is the back of an office front on Main Street. Uh, I think this is their bathroom, the bathroom, so we'll get to listen to people poop. That's fun. Old heater. I used to probably exhaust into that chimney. Uh, all this kind of stuff can come off. You can, you can do you. And the bathroom disaster. It needs cleaned. It needs cleaned. It needs cleaned. We need to put a poster or something here to hide this giant hole. I think that's a roof drain. I'm assuming something in here failed, probably this rubber boot. And they had to bust this wall out to repair that. The roof's looking okay. We got a little bit of a bow right here, but that's not really our problem. Same over there, but again, it's 120 years old in parts of this building, so what do you expect? 
If there's any doubt in how old this place is, here's some proof. This main support beam in the middle of the building, it's riveted. <laughs> well, Luke, it looks like we've got our work cut out for us. What do you say we dig in? Get this place up to snuff, build a shop. I'm gonna climb instead. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, have a good time. Goodbye. Well, if we're gonna clean and restore a shop, we're gonna need some tools. Let's do it right. It's gonna be really expensive. Woo! Let's get to it. I'm scrubbing. Don't touch me, I'm sterile. <laughs> While Luke is doing that, I am going to set to work trying my best to get some water stain off this wall. But if I can get enough of these uh, paint chips and stuff to flake off to where all this loose stuff is gone, I can prep the surface for paint, then we'll just repaint it white and it'll be good to go for as long as we're going to need it to be looking good for. Let's get to it. I'm finally back in the shop this week. I was out for school and editing for the rest of last week while Mook did the bathroom. Today, I'm gonna finish stripping off that wall over there. Stuff that's changed in the meantime. We have a forklift now. We picked up this Mitsubishi FG15 for a pretty good price. It's got like a million thousand bajillion hours on it. Specifically 5,250. Uh, but it runs and everything works. Hey. Under the hood. That's a Mitsubishi 4G33. As you can tell by the amount of blow by, she probably needs a rebuild, but hey, runs for now. It's got a manual transmission, so there's no hydrostat to fail. Uh, and it's gas powered with a carburetor. This is basically the old farm truck of forklifts, so I can keep that thing running forever, no problem. All right, let's set back into stripping these walls for paint. The floor is clean, we got all the paint chips scooped up into a pile, and thrown in the trash can so that they don't go down the sewer. Okay, the time has come to prime this wall. Shiny's going on.
and a general plan to build ourselves an office so for the first time. Mooka will have offices. Dad's here to help us out because I don't know shit about construction. I am merely a metalwork guy. Our general plan is office, office, break room, futon to sleep on for late nights, fridge, microwave, and all of our shirt inventory can get moved here and out of our house. So we can have our house bag. You forgot my fish tank? Oh yeah. <laughs> Luke wants a fish tank. What are you gonna name all your fish? Um, moron and putts and piston slap, oil leak. Rod knock, Kevin. Hey. <laughs> at the new shop and obviously this nail gun is really loud so that's how I do it. In, come see the office. That's no, that's not the door. Oh. This is the door. <laughs> yeah. And there's gonna be a wall between us so that Good. I don't have to smell you. I don't have to, yeah. yeah. You stinky. You stinky box face. <laughs> you are the smelliest person on this planet. Hey, shut up. <laughs> If you remember, that bathroom right here and that office front is a uh, nail salon. So there's a lot of like serenity and calmness in there. That's how you screw up someone's pedicure. <laughs> Sorry, it's got to get done. All right, we're back in the shop. It's been, I think, two weeks since we were last here. 
We were down in Arizona getting this. That right there is a 1973 Ford Bronco that we just rescued out of a storage lot where it sat for about 10 years down in Arizona. It's been off the road since 2001. Uh, that was a pretty awesome series. If you have not seen it, check it out right here. If you guys are not regulars to the channel because this is not really a car video this time, it's more of a, a home improvement thing, uh, and you're watching us for the first time, this is what we do. We take cars that have been sitting for a number of years abandoned in different situations and locations and make them run and drive again, bring them back to life, put them back on the road, and give them another chance at life. So if you haven't seen any of our videos before, I urge you to go check them out. There's some pretty cool stuff here that a lot of even non-car people will enjoy. For example, uh, there's a Golden Oldsmobile. I'll link it right now. This is a really good series, very wholesome series that has a lot of uh, characters in it and a bit of a tearjerker at the end, some people say. So that's a pretty good series. I would say start there if you're new to the channel. Back on subject, while we were gone, Dad has been busy doing the electrical in the office and it is now done. All, all of it's done. I, I left and it all got done. It's magical, really. All of our wiring is strung through our walls and studs. It is all uh, brought out to the boxes where it will be terminated after the drywall is all done. Which, speaking of drywall, that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Right there is about $800 of the drywall and insulation, which is still out in the truck. So we're going to insulate these walls and then hang some drywall to our plaster and paint. Getting to the final stages. It's really starting to feel like an office in there. Minus the floor. We still gotta figure that out yet. I don't know what to do about that floor. Alright, we got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. We have a visitor. 
Whoever might it be? Junkyard Mook, what are you doing here? <laughs> no one saw that. Good as new. Fine. I got a bunch of blankets. I thought you were just getting a printer. Oops. Oops. There's about 50 in there. What? What are these for? To donate to animal shelters. You have to be the sweetest, cutest little hacker that's ever been made. No! Whoa. You bought 50 blankets from Menards to give to animal shelters? I sure did. I work for a nonprofit that helps animal shelters. So if an animal at a shelter needs emergency surgery or emergency health care that the shelter can't afford, we provide funds for them. Or we send out like care packages, like blankets or toys or just something to make them more comfortable and happy. Is there something, some way these guys can help with your nonprofit organization for the animals? They can go to the website and donate. However much you donate, we tell you what you provide for an animal. Oh, like, that's kind of cool. So they yeah. get to see where it went and what yeah, it Yeah, so you see where your funds go. It's the Lexi Legacy Foundation.org. Right. We'll put a link right here. You guys can go check that out yeah. and help support Mook side projects. Tell them Mook sent ya. Should we go take some blankets or some puppies? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll get back to building the shop. Yeah! As I'm sure you've noticed, you hear that sucker over there running in the background quite often as it gets colder outside. Which, it's gotten quite colder outside. Part of that's probably due to the fact that this building is not very well insulated. The ceiling seems to be okay, and those exterior walls over there seem to be pretty decent. But this wall and that wall are a different story simply because these windows are here. Now these are some old single plane windows, so there's no uh, insulation value to the actual glass itself. And to make matters worse, there's a huge uninsulated gap around the entirety of this window pane. And you could feel an actual draft blowing through. On some of them, you can actually just straight up see outside. You can see the outdoors through this crap. So we've already gone ahead the other day and started to insulate these with some great stuff. Which I need to peel off and cut that back so that Mook can paint all this. But I'm going to go ahead with another can and continue on with filling these gaps. Alright, yeah, just, just got to do that like, you know, ten more times. And then I'm done. All right, there it is. We ended up doing not only just that center crack, but actually around the entire frame because you can literally feel air blowing through there. And you may not believe me and say, Kevin, that come on, it can't be that big of a heat loss. It's just a tiny little gap. Here's a really bad example in the uh, paint booth we haven't even touched yet. I don't know if this is going to stay. I don't know, we'll, we'll get there. But yeah, that right there is the great outdoors and you can see exactly how much wind is coming through with these spider webs that's that's not a small gap like that's huge so this is going to be a big difference to get all this sealed up uh, I think this will actually make a potentially noticeable dent not huge but a noticeable dent in our heating bill once we get this building all sealed up all right quick two cans went into that we decided to pop this uh sill plate I guess you would call it off and take a look at what's going on here because um, I don't think you can see it very well but this whole wall moves when I hit it yeah I can easily force the window to move this is all very rotten through here and not insulated at all because there is not a draft not a breeze but a freaking wind a wind coming through this window If that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. <laughs> That's good two cans right there that should foam up and then we can just cut it right off. 
where that board was supposed to be. I got this side to stop moving air. I didn't get nearly as much insulation there until I ran out, but uh, you know, the board's still on on this side because it wasn't as rotten. So hopefully the structure holding this window is also just better over here. Although I definitely have my doubts. Um, right. I earlier wondered why all that paint was so weird up there. I think you know why. Water. Lots and lots of water. Somebody probably gave me money for this board. <laughs> it's like one of those they pull out of the river. Yeah. One of those when they'd float logs down the river and one of them would sink. To say the least, we have some uh, we have some repair work to do on the framing of this one though. That right there is the exterior tin, and there was no insulation, and just a bunch of big missing rotten boards. Come on so. up. It's been a lot of water. Yeah, there has. There's almost enough wind up here to cause issues with the microphone. <laughs> hey, look at it all. Just flying on through. Well, I finally remembered to bring the camera with us today. Uh, we've been surviving with cell phones the last few days. We've got a lot of work done, but it was nothing too exciting. Uh, as you can see, all the drywall is done. It's been plastered, and Mook has already gone through and primed it. She's even painted the outside of the office yesterday, as you saw. Mook's dad's gonna come down and help today. Uh, I believe you guys are gonna take down the paint move. We're gonna do some destroying. Yeah, well, you can't destroy it. We're, we're gotta, destroying it. We need to use it. We're destroying it. No. We're destroying it. I am going to be prepping our floors, because they are a total disaster. Uh, we already went through and mopped this one. It did okay at best. It needs a lot of work still. So I've got sponges and whatnot. I'm gonna go through and clean up all that plaster. And then we have some underlayment to fix this giant crack that runs through the center and causes a lot of waves in this floor. I think that ends about a quarter inch higher than this end. And likewise this way. So we're gonna level the two offices so that we're not rolling around in our chairs and we're trying to sit at our desks. And then I think we're gonna do a slap board tiling wood stuff thing over there because that one's got a lot of chips in the concrete but it's pretty level. We're going to go ahead and put the waterproofing strip on the outside of the office so that we can wash the floors and whatnot. Of course we went down to Menards and priced sheets of plastic and it was expensive and all white. That was all we could get. So we had to get creative and try to find a waterproof wallboard in black which we couldn't find. We actually sorry we did. Lowe's could order it in but it was like $53 a sheet and you had to get 15 which is not gonna fly. So I brainstormed on it for a while and suddenly yeah. an idea came to me. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I've seen textured black plastic before, I just don't remember where. And then I remembered, it was OAM. When I worked there for the whole summer, over at OAM they make quick covers, the plastic rocker covers, and this is a raw sheet of their textured product. These sheets all had defects in them. There's a little tiny like nick in every one of them so they had to throw an entire pallet away. That's how tight they are in their quality control. Which means we got a whole bunch of sheets of plastic for free. They are unfortunately half sheets but we're gonna make that work since we're saving like 200 bucks by running these. And now our office is going to be sealed and protected by quick covers. So without further ado, let's get to it.
the first of many. Probably gonna have to do a second coat on that, but now we can start to clean sections of the shop and move stuff around as we go. And get ready to install these bad boys in the next video. So with that being said, that's gonna be the end of this video for the shop restoration part two. We're gonna wrap up the paint, put some flooring in the office, move all of our equipment into the office, and then move all of our equipment into the shop and get this sucker ready to go. Thank you very much to all of those involved. Thank you, Angus, for all your help. Thank you, Dad, for all your help. Thank you to Mook, of course, for all her help. Thank you to Ben and his two kids for helping out as well. Oh, and we can't forget, thank you very much to Mook's dad. Thanks, Padre. Thanks, Dad. Angus. Hi. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see part two, make sure you subscribe below. It's not going to be out right away next week, but it will be coming out soon. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications to see when we post new videos because it's completely random. Make sure you subscribe to our friends, Junkyard Mook, Wacky oh. Garage, <laughs> The Boss Garage, Vice Grip Garage, Dylan the Cool Classic Mustangs 429, uh, Cars and Cameras, and Thunderhead 289. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.